Hello, I am Roman with Daikin Comfort Technologies, and I am making this video to err on the side of caution and eliminate any sign of confusion that we may have created in regards to capillary tubes and VRV equipment. And the question that I get a lot right now is in regards to VRV3, right? There's not a lot of information out there, and some things in our newer units such as VRVX or VRV4 um, are also similarly confusing. You may go on the parts database or order a capillary tube for a specific model number unit, and they say they don't have it anymore, right? And you're like, well, what the heck do I do? Um, I'm going to show you what to do, right? Uh, my job is to not only assist with technical service issues, but also help educate everyone uh, so that you guys can make uh, decisions out in the field in a short amount of time and also with extreme accuracy to prevent future failures. All right, so let's dive in. So the first thing I want to show you here is I have a unit. Let me make sure I've got the right one here. Let me put these side by side for you. All right, uh, on the left-hand side here, I have an RXYQ96PBTJ. I was told that the capillary tube either ruptured or is plugged. So I go over here to my parts diagram layout, and I find my capillary tube. Uh, there it is. But when I come down here and I look, I slide across, and there is no details, right? I can't select it. I can't order it. I can't even click on it. I go over to the right. Well, maybe I can find some specification information, and there is nothing. What am I supposed to do with this, right? I'd have to reach out to my parts bank um, and get more information. Yes, that is what you should do, right? In the meantime, we all live in the world of real. Uh, they may not get back to you right away or, you know, within a week or so. It depends on how busy they are. Or, worst case scenario, they find your part, but it's out of stock. What do you do next, right? You don't sit around and wait, right? We're going to take action here. So what I'm doing is I'm reverse engineering it. We look here. We have an RXYQ, uh, RXYQ 96 PBTJ. That means this unit on the left-hand side is a heat pump. This unit here on the right-hand side is a heat recovery. You notice that they're both the same tonnage. So what I'm going to do is go over here, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to find my same assembly for oil return. That, right, look pretty similar, right? Two uh, refrigerant oil separators on one bracket mount. It feels like it looks like the same filters. You notice that the cap tubes on the right-hand side here are actually slightly different. One is completely round and the other one is oval. You notice on the left-hand side here, they are both oval. Now, what am I gonna do next? What I wanna do next is, what's the whole purpose of this assembly, right? To return oil. What is factored into that returning of oil? It would be compressor size, right? It would be refrigerant velocity. It would be tonnage capacity. How much refrigerant are we moving through these oil separators? How much oil am I expected to return back in the same volume? So let's cross-reference cross here for a second. All right, so this has a JT100GCVDKW at T. And looky there, I have a JT100 GCVDKW at T. Same exact compressors. Okay, what about the second compressor? Scroll down here. This is a JT170G KWTJ at SB. Uh, would you looky there? It is the same compressor. So these two units, although one is a heat pump and one is a heat recovery, and they're actually different cabinet sizes, have the same exact compressors. The assemblies look exactly the same. Now, notice that these two are the same size on the left-hand side. These two on the right are different sizes. This is where it gets interesting, right? Playing fast and loose with the term interesting. You'll notice that these are both V4s. This is a dash 2. This is just, just a regular V5 dash 4. You'll notice that here I have the ability to click on these part numbers, which I'm going to show you here in a second. But also on the right-hand side here, you'll notice that under the specification section, there is some numbers. What do they mean? Let's dive into it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a chart with all the research that I've done just so that you guys can understand. This is something that I did out in the field. This is... Most all the capillary tubes that we manufacture for VRV equipment of the VRV3 series, right? Where we're getting to that age now where the equipment is about 11 to 15 years old, if not 16 years old, if you have early VRV3, it's going to start to fail, unfortunately. There's going to be premature failures due to poor installations and, and a slew of issues. And I could go on that topic forever. But that's not what we're here, guys. We're here to figure out how do I replace my capillary tube with the same exact uh, piping, right? As the manufacturer, we are always going to say replace with OEM. In real-world uh, characteristics and scenarios, sometimes that is, is unrealistic in a timely, quick 
uh, repair that may need to happen, right? We're going to say we're still going to say from a factory standpoint that you have to go back and replace it with OEM. But I'm going to teach you how to to not just get around it, but to do a, a fix out in the field in a timely manner um, with a minimal amount of uh, differences between what the OEM is and what you can find out in the field. So let's dive in here on the top right hand side. This is the capillary tube that has no information right from that RXYQ 96 PBTJ heat pump. You'll notice under the specification section, there is nothing. But we did find, however, a different uh, part number, right? The knit in a six is just one more extra. That's actually the same um, pipe, the same capillary tube in a similar unit of that model. But we're going to get to that here in a section second okay top left hand side let's dive into that same model so this is an rxyq 96 right here on the right hand side top no information this is an rayq 96 pbtj you'll notice that that no, those numbers there they don't make a whole lot of sense these numbers are actually in millimeters so if we take this millimeter to inch conversion this is what you actually get guys your od is zero uh, point zero seven eight inches right? that's your outer diameter by inner diameter is 0 0.039 inches. I recommend that you get as close to these numbers as possible. I understand that, that it may be impossible to get something this close because sometimes the metric system converting over to inches, uh, we don't really manufacture anything specific like this down to that, that level, but you can get pretty close. The last number, that 470L that you see there, is your length. That is the length of your capillary tube. Now, I understand that it's wrapped up about four, five, six times, Right, but if you were to unroll that, which I don't recommend, if you were to unroll that, the length of it would be 18.5 inches. Right, remember that our, our systems are manufactured engineered in Japan, guys, and so we're using the metric system. Here in the U.S., we use the, the here we go, imperial system, right? We're doing actual inches or English standard or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, with that being said, this is your capillary tube that you're going to find in your common parts store. Let's go down to another model here, REMQ120 PVTJ. This is a 0 0.078 inches, right? Outer diameter, you'll notice exactly the same. Inner diameter is 0 0.039 inches, right? Outer diameter and inner diameter, why do they matter, right? When you have the outer diameter measurement and you have the inner diameter measurement, this is all about wall thickness, right? We're saying that the, the capillary tube has to have a specific wall thickness as well as a specific amount of opening on the inside for volume and flow of oil back to the compressor. Then we take it a step further. Remember, capillary tubes are metering devices after a certain specific length. That specific size unit, that specific size compressor, the amount of oil that's going to go through there, we may need to meter it more than we do on another model. So because of that, this one you'll notice is 46.45 inches long instead of that 18.5 inches long. Same exact cap tube in diameter on the outer diameter and inner diameter. However, different lengths. And then you'll go to our last one here. This is the REMQ120 uh, PBTJ. These are two, same unit, right? Two different compressors, which means two different metering devices. You'll notice that this one here, which is that circular one you saw in that picture, right? We can go back and look at it here. That circular one right here, that B5, you'll notice right here, see? Same number. This one's 34.64 inches long. Remember, we want to get as close as possible to the original OEM part, because remember, metering is important. If you make it too long or the diameter is too small or too large, you may move oil too quickly. You might get hot gas back to your compressor or not enough oil back to your compressor in the first place, and you will be the cause of another premature failure, unfortunately. Now, with that said, uh, we were able to get the part here on the top right-hand side, uh, kind of cross-comparison for a similar unit that actually gives us the information that we're looking for. And you'll notice here on the right-hand side, this one is a 2.6. As, a point, as opposed to the two, that just means that, that with this being an OD of 0 0.102 inches by 0 0.039 inches, it's the same inner diameter as all the other ones, as well as close to the same length, um, is the same length as this one here. You'll notice that it's just a different thickness, right? This is an older model, VRV3. Uh, they wanted a cap tube that is actually a little bit thicker. That's that uh, picture that we saw here on the left-hand side. There you have it, guys. This is the, the mystery of capillary tubes and VRV equipment uh, revealed. Hopefully, you guys found this video uh, helpful. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. Just remember, guys, when you're out in the field changing capillary tubes, 
it's very important to get it exactly the same way you left it uh, with the same exact capillary tube and also ensure that you don't plug the ends when you're installing them and brazing them and unbrazing them. All right, I'm Roman Ball, signing off.